Have you ever wondered how you can make your own microgreen mix? Well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that. Here next to me, I have basic salad mix. This is a pre-mixed seed blend from True Leaf Market, and it consists of five different types of brassicas. The reason why they chose these five types of brassicas is because they all grow at a similar rate. As you can tell from this tray in front of me, they are all at about the same height now, and you can actually still see which varieties are what by looking at the canopy. When it comes to choosing what types of seeds that you're gonna mix for your blend, you wanna make sure you pick things that grow at the same rate. Because if I were to pick a brassica and then throw a radish in there, the radish seed is gonna grow much faster than the brassica seed, and it will actually tower over your brassicas, and it will block them from getting light, and sometimes even block them from getting air. So you wanna make sure that you're very careful what you choose to mix together. Here next to me, I've already laid out the three types of seeds I'm going to be using. First is gonna be my Brussels sprouts, next my tat soy, and last, my purple sprouting broccoli. I chose these three brassicas because of their similar germination and growth rate. I know that these three mixed together are gonna to make a perfect tray for us. Now let's go over the supplies you're gonna need. Here next to me, I have my three tray set up. On the very bottom, I have my 1020 with no holes. That's gonna be used to house our bottom water whenever we get to that point. After that, I have my 1020 that has little slits in it. That's gonna be used to put my medium in it. You can actually use a mesh tray if that's what you have available to you. But for today, I'm gonna to be using the slit tray. And lastly, you have your 1020 that also has no holes. This is gonna be used to place on top of the seeds and put a brick on top of it for the first few days. So that way we can trap in that moisture and also help get even germination across the whole tray. Later, we will be reversing that into blackout whenever we remove the brick, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The last thing that you're going to need over here is a way to measure out your seeds. I'm going to be using my cup and a scale for today. For today's grow, we're gonna be using 24 grams total. And because I have three different types of seeds, I need to divide that number so that way I can get the right amount, which means I'm gonna be using eight grams of each variety. So first, let's go ahead and start with our broccoli. We need to get eight grams of seed. And now I'm going to move on to my tat soy because I know I'm gonna to get to 24. Now that it's at eight, I'm gonna go ahead and add in eight more grams, which is gonna put us at 16. Oops. I went a little bit over, but that's perfectly okay. And now our very last seed, which is our Brussels sprouts. And we're gonna to try to get this up to the 24 mark. So now we have 24.3. I went a little bit over, but that is perfectly okay. What I'm going to do now is because I want to mix the seeds, we're actually going to mix this around and that way all the seeds get mixed together instead of being a little separate because we want this tray to be nice and blended like this one over here. So now let me set that aside and now I'm gonna move this too. The next step of this is I'm going to grab my medium and put it into my tray. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Now that I have my medium in my tray, I'm just gonna kind of break apart any clumps that I have and begin spreading this evenly across my tray. You want this to come up basically just below the rim of the tray, but not overflowing. And you wanna make sure you get as even as you possibly can so you don't have low spots or high spots. And this is about where everyone's inner perfectionist starts to come out. <laughs> I think I could spend a long time trying to make this perfect, but that's good. <laughs> now what we're going to do is take that seed mix, pour it a little bit into your hand, or if you're using a shaker, whatever you're using, begin seeding your tray. You want to try to get this as even as you possibly can and try not to group it too much. Now that we have our seeds evenly spread out, what we're going to do is you're going to grab your mister. Today I'm using my mister, which is hooked up to our filtered tap water. And I'm just gonna give this a light mist across the whole top of the seeds. You don't wanna to do too much water, but just enough so that way they can get to their germinate in. Last, you're going to take your tray that you set aside and put it right on top, just like that. And we're going to be using our 15 pound paver. 
and we're gonna place that right on top of the tray. That way we can get even germination across the whole top. The very last step is getting this placed on the shelf. That way it can begin, it's germinating. Now that we have that placed on the shelf, you're gonna water it twice a day for the next few days. Until then, I will see you whenever we remove that brick. Today is day three of our microgreen mix tray. We're gonna pull off the shelf, remove this brick and set it aside. Oops. And now I'll remove that top tray. If you look here, you can see that most of our seed holes are all stuck to the bottom of this tray, which is awesome. That's what we wanna see, because that means that most of them aren't stuck to the rest of the canopy. And that is perfect for right now. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of take my towel that I have here and I wipe them onto the floor. And then later I go back and I vacuum that up. Since everything is looking great, we got perfect germination and we no longer have as many seed holes stuck to it. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to put this into blackout. But before I do that, let me check the bottom. And we do have our roots poking through. And anytime that we have our roots poking through, we want to give it a light mist. And that way these stay nice and damp and they don't get dried out. Let me just give this a light mist now. Perfect. And we're gonna take that tray that we had like that and reverse it into blackout like this. So now all you gotta do is put it on your shelf and I'll see you guys in a few days whenever we take that out of blackout and put it into light. Today is day four of our microgreens mix and we are going to pull it off the shelf and take a look at it. This has now been in blackout for one full day and I believe that we are at the perfect height now to introduce it into the light. So we are no longer going to need this tray. Because we are introducing this into light, that means that we're gonna begin bottom watering. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and grab that and I'll see you in a second. I have half a cup of our ocean solution water mixture and I'm just gonna pour this into the bottom. Give it a little move around to make sure everyone gets some. And now I'm gonna take my tray and put it into the light. What I'm going to do now is twice a day, I'm gonna come out, bottom water it. I'm gonna start it off with around half a cup and as it needs more water, I will give it more. I'll see you guys on harvest day. It is day 11 of our microgreen mixed tray and today is going to be harvest day. So far, this tray looks perfect. It has a great mound of growth and also the cotyledon size on these look perfect and everything about this tray is exactly where I want it to be today. So today we are going to harvest this and for the supplies that we're going to need is our handy dandy knife. We actually finally had to sharpen this, which is still pretty impressive because it took us, I don't know how long, like a month or two before we actually had to sharpen this knife and we barely sharpened it and now it just once again goes right through. So be careful with your knife guys. <laughs> Next, you're gonna need something to harvest into. I got my bowl slash bag slash scale area because we like to take our data. And now I'm just gonna lightly grab this after I move my sleeves and just go right on through. I'm trying not to harvest too terribly low so that way I don't get the medium mixed into this. Oh so pretty you can lightly see a little bit of the purple tones in there just mixed in and oh smelling the brassica smell it smells so good i think that's going to be awesome for tonight's dinner you can make me a nice salad And this is looking like a very, very abundant tray so far. Nice, good growth, not too much lower growth. It's looking perfect. We got a very happy tray. We're at 424 grams, which is also 15 ounces exactly. I am extremely satisfied with our harvest weight on this. And now what we're going to do is pull a little bit out and do the taste test. So keep in mind that this is multiple crops. So the flavor is gonna be a mixture of all those. 
but we're going to just at least see if it tastes good. <laughs> I think that tastes perfect. So that means that we got a great harvest weight, great growth, and we got the flavor that we're looking for. I am very satisfied with this tray. And I think you guys are gonna to be too. Now I know we have a lot of people that always ask us, what do we do with the medium afterwards? What we usually do is we'll just kind of pull it out of the tray like this, cause it creates this really beautiful mat of roots and grow medium. And we'll just toss this in our outdoor compost pile. We never bring this back into our grow space because the chance of a pathogen being mixed into this for microgreens is just too high for us to risk. So we'll throw it out in our outdoor one and we will use that in our outdoor gardening. It's like a root roll. <laughs> Let's talk about the vitamins in each one of these varieties, starting with our Brussels sprouts. It has vitamins B, C, and K, folic acid, and fiber. Broccoli has antioxidants, fiber, vitamins A, C, and B complex, calcium, potassium, and copper. And then with tat soy, we have antioxidants, fiber, vitamins A, C, E, and K. Talk about a powerhouse of vitamins. I'm definitely gonna be using this tonight in our salads. That way you can boost my immune system, especially with the coronavirus going on. I think this is gonna be a great way to get all the nutrients I need. That is the end of this grow. I think we did an amazing job getting even consistency, amazing flavor, and great appearance across our entire tray. I'm very happy with how this turned out and I don't think that there's anything I would have changed for this grow. And I think that you guys are gonna succeed very well too. Things that I would be aware of is to make sure that you choose crops that grow at the same rate. So that way you get a very good consistency and your tray's not looking super wonky and uneven. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Also, we have a Facebook and an Instagram that are both at On The Grow Farms. And we have a website that we're constantly trying to update, which is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much and keep on believing.